Turkiya comes to mind whenever we examine anything Sheikh Uthman ibn Farouk says. Mansour Maliki has called Sheikh Uthman a pathological liar, but this has caused some of us to wonder why Muslims would be exposing Sheikh Uthman for lying when Sheikh Uthman's lies may be justified by the Quran and other Muslim sources. So I posted a video asking Mansour to explain why he doesn't believe that what Sheikh Uthman is doing is permissible in Islam. I quoted two passages. Surah 3, verse 28 of the Quran, Let not the believers take disbelievers for their friends in preference to believers. Whoso doeth that hath no connection with Allah, unless it be that ye but guard yourselves against them, taking, as it were, security. Allah biddeth you beware only of himself, unto Allah is the journeying. Then I went through Ibn Kathir's commentary on 3.28. Here's the relevant part. Allah said next, unless you indeed fear a danger from them, meaning accept those believers who in some areas or times fear for their safety from the disbelievers. In this case, such believers are allowed to show friendship to the disbelievers outwardly, but never inwardly. For instance, Al-Bukhari recorded that Abu Adarda said, We smile in the face of some people, although our hearts curse them. Al-Bukhari said that Al-Hassan said, The Tukya, i.e. Tukya, is allowed until the day of resurrection. Mansour posted a response on Twitter, and I have to say, it's really nice seeing someone being honest about Tukya. Let's go through this. David Wood has asked about Tukya. That's a link to my video. And he quoted 328 as well as Ibn Kathir's tafsir. I checked Ibn Kathir's tafsir and can confirm he quoted it accurately, except the website he quoted from omitted a statement attributed to Ibn Abbas that taqiyya is not with actions and only with the tongue. See attached image. The statement is highlighted. That's interesting. The English translation of Ibn Kathir is abridged. For some reason, they omitted that part. Here's the Arabic for anyone who wants to check it out. There are a few things to point out. Manifesting friendship by action, for example, smiling in people's faces and so forth, is not taqiyya, according to the statement of Ibn Abbas, as taqiyya is only with speech. Having said that, if someone was fearful of the kuffar, it would be allowed for him to say he's their friend, if that can protect him. But if he gave a promise, he would have to fulfill it. This form of faking supportive friendship with the kuffar is only permissible when one fears them. However, such fear doesn't exist for an American citizen as the terms of citizenship do not require him to be friends with kuffar. As such, this ayah can't even be used in a Western context unless you're dealing with the mafia or the like, in which case, sure, pretend to be their friend to keep their evil away from you. I think this is where we're seeing things a little differently. Mansour says, well, you don't have to be friends with the kuffar in the West, so there's no need for taqiyya. Whereas I'm thinking that if people like Sheikh Uthman were honest about their plans to subjugate and enslave non-Muslims, non-Muslims would be more hostile towards Islam. So if Sheikh Uthman fears hostility, it seems like he could lie about his views. Basically, Mansour is saying that taqiyya applies in very specific situations and that Sheikh Uthman isn't in those situations. I'm saying that it looks like it could apply to Sheikh Uthman's situation, depending on how flexible we are with our interpretations. There are three levels to note. Manifesting actions that are different to how you truly feel. Outright lying in affairs unrelated to religion. Lying in affairs related to religion. As for the first two, Everyone can conceive of situations in which they are acceptable, and I don't think anyone would blame a Muslim man for telling his wife she's beautiful when really she isn't, nor for talking politely to someone one hates to avoid the foulness of their character. And it is not for these first two that we blame Uthman, rather it's for the third. Heck, if Uthman just lied about the tweet, I could understand that maybe he feared the FBI. Keep tuned, I'll mention why the fear would be stupid. But Uthman is lying about religion. Lying about the religion isn't like lying about other things, as intentionally denying aspects of the religion or distorting it 
is disbelief and takes one out of Islam. But this would mean that Sheikh Uthman is no longer a Muslim. The only time one can lie about religion is when they are forced, so when they're being tortured or threatened with death. Consider 16, 106. Here, Surah 16, verse 106, it allows a Muslim to deny his belief if he's in danger. It should now be noted Uthman isn't being forced. He might feel the kuffar won't like him, but that isn't sufficient. Even getting locked up in prison is not enough. When we say force, we mean real force. The ayah that David mentioned cannot be used in the case of Uthman, as Uthman isn't just manifesting friendship with the kuffar, as the ayah allows, but he is distorting the religion. Note, even when being forced to utter disbelief, like denying that Islam allows slavery, it's only permissible and not recommended. Rather, it is better to speak the truth and be killed, especially if you are a scholar. Now, there's a thought. Sheikh Uthman may actually be held to a higher standard because he's a scholar and has influence over others. So he may have reason not to deceive people in situations where it would be acceptable for other Muslims to deceive people. As for Uthman, I genuinely believe that he sincerely believes in his religious distortions. Consider the following thread. Uthman might believe some of his distortions, but I can actually prove that he is knowingly lying in certain cases. But we'll get to that in other videos. The thread that Mansour mentions begins with, Dawa Deception, starring Uthman Farouk. In the video, Uthman makes the following conditions of marriage. One, being physically ready. Two, being mentally and emotionally ready. It is his claim that this is what's mentioned in the books. He mentioned Al-Mughni by Ibn Kudama, and he's wrong. I don't want to go through the entire thread because it's on a different topic, but I'll put a link to the thread in the description box for anyone who wants another example of Sheikh Uthman distorting Islam. In the thread, you can see he is lying about Islam, but to Muslims, and as such, it isn't merely that he lies to Kufar. Thus, the reason I dislike him so much is because he is misguiding Muslims. And of course, I hate that anyone commit disbelief by lying about the religion. This isn't the case of him just lying about making one tweet. It is the case of him systematically tearing apart the religion along with the rest of the dishonest Dawa people. No Muslim in America has any excuse to lie about Islam. Merely saying that Islam teaches offensive war is not a crime. Rather, it's protected under the First Amendment. Believing in the commands of Islam is not a crime. Rather, it's protected by the First Amendment. What would get you in serious trouble is if you were inciting people to act on those beliefs, and incitement is very hard to prove. Perhaps Uthman has a militia that is planning to enslave American girls, wouldn't surprise me, in which case him lying about the tweet makes sense. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. Keep in mind, if it were just the tweet he lied about, I would think he was being silly, but wouldn't be moved to oppose him so heavily, as lying about making a tweet isn't the same as lying about religion. To sum up Mansour's view, Sheikh Uthman isn't in a situation where lying to non-Muslims would be justified. But even if he were in a situation where lying to non-Muslims would be justified, he shouldn't do it because he's a scholar. But even if he decided to lie to non-Muslims as a scholar, it still wouldn't be permissible to lie to them about Islam. And even if it were permissible to lie to non-Muslims about Islam, Sheikh Uthman is lying to Muslims about Islam. That seems to be Mansour's view. I can still see why Sheikh Uthman thinks it's okay to lie to non-Muslims, even about Islam. He could be convinced that if non-Muslims knew what his plans are, they would be more hostile towards him and towards his community. But it is more of a stretch to deceive Muslims. You would think that, for the reasons Mansour mentioned, deceiving Muslims would be completely unacceptable for a Muslim leader. And yet, it's so common in the West, that it seems like there must be some sort of justification for it. When ordinary Muslims in the West tell us that Aisha wasn't nine when Muhammad had sex with her, she was 18, they're not intentionally lying. Many of them believe it. 
but they believe it because that's what their leaders tell them. Their leaders, however, who've read the sources, have to know that Aisha was nine. They have to. So they know that they're lying to Muslims when they tell their followers that Aisha was 18. This happens all the time with all kinds of moral issues, and especially with things like jihad and slavery and sex slavery. Tons of Muslim leaders, like Sheikh Uthman, are knowingly lying to Muslims. There must be some reason why they think it's acceptable. Any thoughts on this? I actually have a couple of theories. Let me know what you think in the comments section. And special thanks once again to Mansoor for taking the time to answer our questions.